Welcome to this tutorial that describes how all ATP bioluminescence assays from preferred cell systems can be calibrated and standardized and how sample plates are processed to measure proliferation or cytotoxicity and cell viability. There's a lot of ground to cover, so this tutorial is in two separate video parts. In part one of this tutorial, we shall first describe why you should calibrate and standardize the assay, the concept of measuring ATP using bioluminescence, what you'll need to remove from the assay kit box to perform the assay, the additional supplies that you'll need, and the steps involved in calibration and standardization of the assay. And then we'll go on with the practical aspects of the assay. First, showing how the ATP standard is diluted to perform the standard curve, and then setting up the standard curve and control plate. Prior to demonstrating how ATP bioluminescence assays from preferred cell systems are standardized, let's first answer the question, why? Why standardize an assay in the first place? Truth be told, it's not absolutely necessary. You do not have to perform this step if you don't want to. But if you want your peers and the public to trust and consider your work in stem cell research, cellular therapy, regenerative medicine or toxicology as reproducible and reliable, then assay standardization is the only way to do it. When you standardize an assay and have the quantitative assay parameters to prove it, you are giving your results the relevance and rigor to significantly enhance the meaningfulness of your interpretation and the conclusions you draw from your experiment. It is therefore up to you as to whether you want to spend an extra 30 minutes or so giving your results that extra edge. A luminescence readout is often used in molecular biology. But in cellular research and the fields of cellular therapy and regenerative medicine, measuring cell proliferation ability or potential cytotoxicity or cell viability using ATP bioluminescence is rarely used. In industry, however, ATP bioluminescence is a normal procedure since it represents the most sensitive and accurate non-radioactive readout for cellular processes. The basis of measuring cell proliferation, cytotoxicity or viability using ATP bioluminescence is a simple one. If cells are viable, they produce chemical energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate or ATP that's produced in the mitochondria of the cells. After cell culture, an ATP enumeration reagent is added as a single step to each cell culture well. The ATP enumeration reagent, or ATPER, contains a lysis buffer that lyses the cells and releases the intracellular ATP. You'll notice that the culture medium will turn yellow. Once the ATPER has been added to all culture wells of the plate, it is incubated in the dark for 10 minutes. This is best done by transferring the plate to a luminescence plate reader and closing the drawer. During this time, the released intracellular ATP acts as a limiting substrate and reacts with luciferin and luciferase present in the ATPER to produce a so-called glow bioluminescence. The bioluminescence is in the form of light that is measured in the luminometer. This is similar to the glow seen in fireflies at night. The amount of light measured in the luminescence plate reader is directly proportional to the amount of intracellular ATP produced, which, in turn, is directly proportional to the cell viability, amount of cell proliferation, or the amount of cell inhibition. So let's get started. This calibration and standardization protocol can be found in any ATP bioluminescence assay kit manual which can be downloaded from the Preferred Cell Systems website. To perform this step for any ATP bioluminescence assay from Preferred Cell Systems, you will need to remove the non-sterile 96-well plate from the assay kit box, as well as the bottle of medium. 
a vial of ATP standard, a low and high ATP control vial, and the bottle of ATP enumeration reagent. If the medium ATP standard and controls are frozen, then thaw them in a beaker of lukewarm water. The ATP enumeration reagent should be thawed in a beaker of water at normal room temperature. Now let's take a look at the extra supplies that you'll need. First you'll need laboratory gloves. Make sure you wear laboratory gloves at all times when performing this protocol since ATP is present on the skin and can influence the results. Next you'll need a Vortex mixer. Then you'll need 5 1 ml plastic vials or 5 5 ml tubes with snap lids. A 1 ml single channel variable pipette with tips. A 0.1 ml single channel pipette with tips. A plastic reagent reservoir wide enough for an 8 channel pipette. An 8 channel pipette capable of delivering 0.1 ml and a rack of tips. And you'll need the luminescence plate reader, set with an integration time of 2 milliseconds. Make sure that the pipettes you, you use have been professionally calibrated. We recommend that, that you use electronic pipettes, which are self-calibrating every time you use them. However, even these have to be professionally calibrated on a routine basis. There are four individual steps to calibrating and standardizing an ATP bioluminescence assay. First, dilution of the ATP standard provided with the kit. Second, dispensing each of the ATP dilutions into the 96 well plate provided and also dispensing the low and high controls after the ATP dilutions. Third, addition of 0.1 milliliters of the ATP enumeration reagent to each well followed by mixing. And finally, measurement of bioluminescence in the luminescence plate reader and analysis of the results. Let's now go to step one of the protocol, dilution of the ATP standard. We have our bottle of thawed medium and vial of ATP standard. We're first going to dispense the right amount of medium into each of the five empty vials or tubes. So first make sure you label each of the vials or tubes. Using a one milliliter pipette, transfer 0.9 milliliters of medium into the first vial or tube. Discard the tip. Next, transfer 0.35 milliliters of medium into the second vial or tube and discard the tip. Then transfer 0.9 milliliters of medium into the third vial or tube and discard the tip. Add 0.9 milliliters of medium into the fourth vial or tube and discard the tip. And finally, add 0.9 milliliters of medium into the fifth vial and, yes, you've guessed it, discard the tip. Now we can start dispensing and diluting the ATP standard. The vial of ATP standard contains 0.3 milliliters of 10 micromolar ATP. So thoroughly mix the contents of the ATP standard via vortexing. Using the small volume pipette set at 0.1 milliliters, transfer 0.1 milliliters of the ATP standard stock to the first vial or tube. Discard the tip. Tightly close the vial or tube and mix thoroughly by vortexing. The concentration of ATP has now been diluted tenfold from 10 micromolar to 1 micromolar. Using the same pipette, transfer 0.1 milliliters from the first vial or tube into the third vial or tube. Discard the tip and vortex the contents. This dilutes the ATP from 1 micromolar down to 0.1 micromolar. Again, using the same pipette, but with a new tip, transfer 0.1 milliliters from the third vial or tube to the fifth or last vial or tube. Discard the tip and mix thoroughly. 
The, this dilutes the ATP a further tenfold from 0.1 micromolar down to 0.01 micromolar. Now using the 1 milliliter pipette, transfer 0.35 milliliters from the first vial or tube to the second vial or tube. Discard the tip, mix the contents by vortexing. You have now diluted the ATP from 1 micromolar down to 0.5 micromolar. Finally, using the smaller volume pipette, transfer 0.1 milliliters from the second vial or tube to the fourth vial or tube. Discard the tip and mix. The 0.5 micromolar dilution has been diluted tenfold down to 0.05 micromolar. You've now completed the first step of the procedure. We are now ready to set set up the 96 well plate with medium ATP standard dilutions and controls. We are now going to fill the first four columns of the non-sterile 96 well plate. Each data point will consist of four replicate wells. Using the small volume pipette set at 0.1 milliliters, transfer 0.1 milliliters of the medium into the first four wells of the first column that is, wells A1, B1, C1, and D1. Make sure you change the tip after dispensing the medium. Starting with the lowest ATP concentration, vortex the vial or tube and transfer 0.1 milliliters of the 0.01 micromolar ATP standard into the next four replicate wells of the first column, that's wells E1, F1, G1, and H1, and then change the tip. From the fourth vial or tube containing 0.05 micromolar of ATP standard, vortex and transfer 0.1 milliliters into the first four wells of the second column, namely A2, B2, C2, and D2. The 0.1 micromolar ATP standard is dispensed into wells E2, F2, G2, and H2, and then change the tip. The second vial or tube containing 0.5 micromolar ATP standard is dispensed into the first four wells of the third column, A3, B3, C3, and D3. And the highest ATP concentration at one micromolar is dispensed into wells E3, F3, G3, and H3. Once the ATP standards have been tra transferred to the plate, the fourth column will now contain the low and high controls and are used directly without any dilution necessary. Mix the contents of the vial containing the low control and dispense 0.1 milliliters into the first four wells of the fourth column namely A4, B4, C4, and D4, making sure to change the tip afterwards. Finally, mix the contents of the high control and dispense 0.1 milliliters into wells E4, F4, G4, and H4. Step two of the procedure has now been completed, and this will also conclude the first part of this tutorial.